Okay, our next presenter, I see he's all set up, yes, okay, uh, is Bradford Spears. Mr. Spears has an extensive background in banking and finance. Uh, Brad has a BS and MS from MIT. His talk today is titled, and again, let me check the screen to make sure I have the right title, Big Data in Banking. So let's welcome Mr. Spears to the podium. Thank you. Sounds like it's on. So <clears throat> good afternoon. So with big data and banking, right, we want to answer some, some simple questions, right? We want to get some real wisdom out of it. And it's, it's pretty simple. We want to find out who's going to pay us back. So I'm kind of curious. Right? We, we found a surprising thing when we looked at some of our data around who will pay us. And I'm curious, there's a life event that actually changes things. And I'm curious if anyone could guess what that life event is that'll tell us that if this happens, you're not going to pay us back. Anyone have an idea? Divorce. Divorce. Not quite. You die. Job loss. Any, any others? Yeah. Okay. It turns out that if you pay a bail bondsman, we can almost tell you absolutely, right, you're not going to pay us back. So the moment you pay the bail bondsman, right, <clears throat> other things will happen. So with that, I guess I just wanted to give you an idea is that we do have a lot of data in banking. Uh, if you're not familiar with Bank of America, we serve a number of different markets. I, and I'm describing this to give you a sense of the size of our business, right? If you use our retail branches, right, we have more than 6,000 retail branches. We run, we issue more credit cards than almost anyone else in the, in the United States. We have more home loans. We have a billion documents just in our home loans portfolio. And we bought a little company called Merrill Lynch that runs our markets business. And so across all that, we, turned a, we, uh, we accumulate a lot of data. We have about three dozen data centers and about 70 petabytes of storage. So across that, we want to learn a few things. And I figured I would also start out with a little story. Because sometimes people in banking don't really understand what it is that they're trying to do. So just after I joined, I've been at the bank about four years. And I, I got yanked into a meeting. And they said, why don't you tune our analytics? I said, OK. I said, well, what's the bottleneck? And they said, well, it's running slowly. I said, well, what is running slowly? Well, in the Merrill Lynch business, right, one of our little submarkets has about 2,000 computers. It's in the range of 15 to 20,000 cores. And the job's taking too long. I said, OK. Well, let's start with basic questions. It, are analytics the bottleneck? It turned out they weren't. Right? So then they came back and said, well, what is the bottleneck? It was actually the database performance, the I.O. So we were choking on our own data. But the funny thing was is that the people running the project, they would literally bang their, their fist on the table and say, we are busy 100% of the time. And so the, the head of the, this group said, well, show me right, that this is actually true or not. And I, I said, well, how do you want to see that? And he said, well, why don't you just show me what those 2,000 computers are doing, let's say, over the last six months. I said, no, wait a minute, right? We're, we're getting some multiplying effects here. This is going to get large in a hurry. And so I produced a graph, not this graph, because we have actually 91 different BI tools at the bank, right? And I had to use a standard BI tool to start with. And when I did, it took 10 hours to produce the graph. Now, I came back and I showed it to him, and it looked something like what you're looking at, right, with spikes and valleys, which shocked everyone in the room. They said, what do you mean there's a valley? We are busy all the time. I said, well, if you want, you know, I can change it and redo it. He said, absolutely. I said, I'll give it to you in two days. <clears throat> he said, no, 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 no. I, I need this, you know, in two hours. I said, well, then you're going to need to buy different equipment. All right, so some of the po folks here have talked about the need for HPC, you know, with big data. I can tell you I've seen it firsthand, is that, you know, and people are very much driven by the performance. So to do this, I actually bought a, a custom version of MATLAB that ran on a graphics card. All right, we wind, wound up you know, processing all the data and pumping it through to produce this three-dimensional graph. And this here shows about 2,000 computers running over the course of a month. And what you can see on the right is we run nighttime batch jobs. And much of our risk is calculated at night. But it turns out that you can see the, the markets actually as they close. So as the, um, the Asian markets close, there's one bump. Right? As Europe closes, there's another. And it turns out that that little spike in the middle is doing a little bit of pre-processing for the nighttime job. But that's essentially, intuitively, what this particular business does. But to give you an idea, right, we have a few 
few things that create data. And those things create some challenges. And those challenges might surprise you in that some of the technical things that we face as a bank, I find line up well uh, or have a lot of overlap with other communities. So some of the things we face is that, uh, whether or not you're aware of it, uh, there are some people who believe that we are not just the Bank of America, but the Bank of America. And so we are, in fact, a, a bit of a cyber target. Um, beyond that, then, as we begin to understand our, our risk, right? So with all the different businesses that I described, right, our risk of, let's say, Boeing going out of business is not just Boeing, but there are subsidiaries, right? The pizza parlor across the street, for example, from one of those subsidiaries. And understanding how to put all those back together. Infrastructure optimization. So it turns out we have 100,000 people in tech and ops. And once you get to dozens of data centers and, and that kind of scale and size, being able to optimize your infrastructure is no longer a, a small little question. That's a multi-billion dollar question. And then the, the last piece that comes up is that, you know, I went to school with some of the folks who wrote MapReduce. And so a lot of folks, when they would come talk to me about big data, they would sit down and they'd say, I, I have a big data problem and I need to dupe. I said, well, wait a minute, let's back up, right? What are you trying to solve? And what we would find is that there are different types of big data solutions. And we're really seeing three of them, and I'll, I'll take you through those. It's columnar, graph, and Hadoop, and some combination thereof. And what becomes challenging then is how do you combine those various platforms? Because I think a, a number of us know that moving forward, it'll be very difficult to move the data. So walking through these, right, I just want to point out, so we are seeing a lot of graph. And it's a, it's a theme you're going to begin to, to see more and more as we go forward. Um, anyone who's familiar with uh, cyber questions, right, we have the, the usual sources of data, network traffic, firewall logs, and also some friends in finance, right? And the friends in finance create some, some issues around protecting the data and keeping it separate uh, amongst, and also combining the different ontologies. So this data is large, fast changing, and you could call it multi-label. It's another way of saying multi-dimensional. So essentially, I have a large multi-dimensional graph problem uh, that's time-based. So this is a, a non-trivial problem to solve, as some of you are aware. Beyond that, then, uh, I'm also trying to understand my financial risk. So the, the risk here um, is created by the, the payments, and those are the, the edges in this graph. And what you're going to see is that um, you know, all of us who, let's say, spend money on credit cards, right, home loans, uh, I described before the Boeing example, right, with subsidiaries, suppliers, pizza parlors that are in geographic locales and, and things like that. Um, there's even, so the, the blue documents, they gave me a pointer, but I've, the blue documents here are even, I have risk, legal risk. So what's the, um, what is the agreement between the different companies and how do you settle it if someone goes out of business? And it turns out that they're, right now, that's literally done by hand. People read that and understand it, and you know, it's then included in our risk calculations, but that is a, a challenge we see as well. That uh, moving forward, we'd like that to be automated using semantic analysis. Then the next piece is how do you actually combine it? Because essentially I need to do graph and flop in one calculation. And how do I co-locate those, especially as I analyze it across time? So I mentioned infrastructure scheduling, right? So obviously, you know, I think we're all familiar with some of the greedy approaches and things like that that local-based solutions can start with. Uh, the challenge here is we've run about 7,000 different applications. And when we begin to put that together, uh, that is not a, an easy thing to understand, you know, what the infrastructure will, will need to provide. Uh, especially once we begin to mix real-time and batch jobs. And fundamentally, this turns out to be a bin packing problem that uh, I think we're all familiar with MP complete issues and their scalability, or lack thereof. So the challenge that we're facing here is how to combine the, the different big data platforms. So what we're seeing across the bank is that uh, Hadoop is really seen for us as a dumping ground. Like, if you, if you don't know, to you know, back up to this morning's presentation from SGI, right? If you don't know, for us, it's not necessarily um, you know, dumping into, let's say, a, a graph engine or something like that with a large shared memory uh, global address space, but our sort of, uh, default is just dump it in Hadoop. 
And then beyond that, you begin to extract the data and pull it into a columnar or MPP or a graph back end. Now the challenge there is those links, right? And what are those links? And how long do you have to wait in order to do that, those extractions? So there is a lot of power in combining that information, right? And I need a dynamic amount of bandwidth in order to do it, which by itself, if you think of you know, software-defined networking or something like that, that introduces its own set of uh, NP complete uh, security issues along the way. So I try to keep this sweet and short because I was aware that I was between you and lunch. So I just want to sum up and say that uh, we see you know, big data pops up in our business just because of our scale, uh, that I need to combine some of these different uh, big data platforms. And along the way, I need to, to move bandwidth to the data. And that we do see programming as a major challenge going forward. So with that, I'll sum up and open it up to questions.